Hello friends, this lesson we are going to explore the basic structure and internal workings of a proscenium theater. Welcome to our virtual theater where we can explore an array of topics and locations from the comfort of our screens. This 3D model will be available for download in SKP format for those interested in navigating along. Let's jump right in. In a proscenium theater, the proscenium arch acts as a frame through which the action can be seen and describes any staging configuration in which the audience faces the stage directly. Most theaters built after the 1950s have an open arch, which is essentially an undecorated aperture in the wall, but some may be embellished and ornate depending on the time period they were constructed. Here are some examples of proscenium's from various theaters. What are some details you notice? What are some architectural differences? Behind the proscenium sits the grand drape, also referred to as the house curtain, act curtain, or main rag. This curtain is used to obscure or cover the acting area from the audience's view. A theater's proscenium is part of the theater's architecture and therefore has fixed proportions. However, in many scenarios, the scene calls for a reduction in the proscenium opening. For this purpose, curtains called teasers, tormentors, legs, and masking are layered to obscure undesired views of the backstage area. These drapes can be lowered and rehung to reduce the height and width of the opening. What are some scenarios where you may want to use these drapes to trim or hide portions of the stage? Upstage hangs the cyclorama, a large curtain or wall, often concave and lit to create the illusion of sky. How might you light or project on the cyclorama to create the illusion of a night sky? Downstage towards the audience and pit is the apron. This is any part of the stage that extends past the proscenium arch and into the audience or seating area. Speaking of the pit, the orchestra pit is the area in the theater usually located in a depression in front of the stage in which musicians perform. Orchestral pits are utilized in forms of theater that require music such as musical theater, operas, and ballet. Some theaters do not have orchestra pits and require the set designer to work with the rest of the creative team to locate the pit band elsewhere. What are some solutions to presenting a musical in a pitless theater? Where could you locate the orchestra? While we are here, we have a view of the wings. The wings are areas that are part of the stage deck but off stage and out of sight of the audience. The wings are typically masked with the drapes mentioned earlier and used for performers preparing to enter, storage of scenery changes, and as stagehand work areas. They also may house lighting booms as shown here in blue. Speaking of the stage deck, the deck is the designated space for the performance and a focal point. To understand the idea of moving upstage or downstage, you have to know a bit of theater history. During the Renaissance, stages were raked which means the stage sloped down towards the audience. Stages were raked for acoustic reasons and so that the audience could see the action on stage even if they were on the same level. This is where the terms upstage and downstage derive from. Stage right and left are indicated from the perspective of the performer. High above the stage deck is the fly space, the grid, and catwalks. The catwalk is a service platform where lighting and sound equipment can be manipulated. It is also where follow spots and operators exist throughout a performance. Speaking of lighting and sound, to the rear of the house or auditorium, you'll usually find a lighting and sound booth. This is where the stage manager calls the cues for a show and where the light and soundboard operators exist throughout a performance. What do you think is important about the location of the booth? And there you have some basic elements of a theater. Please be sure to respond to the questions.